Fuck! Oh my god! What is up, everyone? Uh, we are back, Lost in the Dark podcast. Welcome to Lost in the Dark podcast. Um, and we are here wow. tonight. Unbelievably special, like one one of my fucking favorite guests we've had on. He, this guy is fucking amazing. We got main songwriter, uh, contributor, fucking everything of the band. We got Brian from Scream at the Sky on the show tonight. Unbelievably special for us. Uh, this guy is fucking incredible, man. Uh, and uh, yeah, we 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 and- cover we cover the gambit. We had a fucking riot with this guy, dude. First, uh, I don't know, first time, or, yeah, because we, yeah, so, wow. But, <laughs> it's the first time he's been on. First yeah, time yeah. Been yeah, first time he's been on, but what I was trying to say was, uh, like, we, it's nice to actually, like, get it scheduled and stuff, because we kind of run into some little things here and there, so we've been kind of talking to him in and out a little bit over the last few weeks, so it's yeah. been, it's awesome to finally have a chance at it, and, Indeed. yeah, he was, yeah, just, I always, I always try to take something from from these conversations, and this had a whole bunch of like just like little mental notes and stuff. Plus, it was just cool to to hear about like you know like the the local stuff, like being a local scene from early on was kind of like inspiring to to like play music and stuff because you don't really hear that a whole lot. Kind of interesting. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. He was a fascinating guy to talk to. And uh he's a road dog. Yeah, he's a Another fucking thing. road like, dog. I didn't I didn't realize how many like just like within the music just the industry he's done and stuff and like just all this like going crazy over shit. and stuff like yeah. Crazy shit. So it, it it was it was enormous fun talking to him and uh and he is welcome back on this show anytime he ever wants to. We we are already excited about having a, like a part two because I, I feel like we touched on most of the things I wanted to touch on, but there were a few things that I forgot. And, uh, yeah. uh, there's the, yeah, there's definitely a lot more I want to talk to him about. And, uh, I'm very excited for their upcoming album, but for now they did release a, uh, self-titled scream at the sky EP, Earlier in 2020, it's a six-track EP. Um, There's also an acoustic version of the track Failures out on YouTube. Um, Phenomenal, phenomenal work. I don't, I've like, I already don't know how this band isn't fucking huge and on regular rotation in the radio. So check these motherfuckers out. You're getting in on the ground floor. Support them. Check out all three, all things Scream at the Sky. Um... They're fucking outstanding. And so without further ado, everyone, here is uh, Brian from Scream at the Sky. Thank you so much, buddy, for being on. We hope you all enjoy the show. Here we go. Off. All right. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Lost in the Dark Podcast. We have an extraordinarily special guest. Brian, lead vocalist of Scream at the Sky, is with us tonight. All the way from Houston, Texas. Or wait. Oh, yeah. It might have froze. <laughs> Hold on. Um, I'm here. Oh, there, there you go. go. There, there we go. go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Scream at the Sky. Brian from Scream at the Sky is with us tonight. What's Thank up, you. guys? Thank you so much for being yeah. here, man, and, and being on the show. Um, we uh yeah, we did that. Uh, we did that thing. We did that that reflections video for your your uh, the uh, save yourself video, dude. Yeah, the track is outstanding. It's okay. it, it really is. I've I've been it's been stuck in my head for a while now. Like it's a really great track. Outstanding work on that, man. Hell yeah. Um. Hell yeah, man. So uh, I I do like to get started with. Uh, I I'm always curious um, because there's it's not crazy often in everyday life that you know you meet another metalhead so i always like to ask uh how did you get into heavy metal music well uh i've always been in all styles of music and then you know like 
uh, I don't know. I, I guess I, I went to my first metal show when I was like 14 years old. And uh, it was a band called Hollister Practice. They're a local Houston band, or used to be. And I went and seen one then. And I was like, oh, shit, this is amazing. And, uh, you know, they had, like, little TVs on the side of the screen playing porno. And just I was just, like, mind-blown 14-year-old. I was like, whoa. I was like, it's, this is what I want to do forever. Hell, yeah. So that got that started me into metal, and then I just never looked back ever ever since. I've just always been a metal rock dude from 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 that time. So it started at a show. That's pretty awesome. Fuck yeah, yeah, man. I say it's not it's not too often. Usually it's like oh yeah, I was into like Slayer or whatever. But it's like to hear somebody talk about like that they were influenced by like a local show that was going on or something that they saw is like this sick. I can definitely yeah. relate to that. Yeah, man. I, I've always been like into music. My older brother played and then I played trumpet in like high school and, and junior high. They would never let me do anything with my trumpet because I didn't give a shit about my grades half the time. And it was like, no pass, no play. You don't get to do nothing. It kind of discouraged me as a person. And that's when I was like, all right, guitar and bass it is. I'm, I'm ready to like, yeah, show. It all just happened at kind of the same time. Around the same time, I was like, all right, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They used to have a fellow band nerd. Hell yeah. <laughs> Former band nerd. <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah, what then? Yeah, so that's, uh, so it sounds like you've been into music for, a, like, like playing music uh, for a while. What, what is, uh, what, what's kind of your musical background? And uh, is Scream at the Sky your first, like, pro, like, band project? Or have you been in stuff previous? Well, I, I've actually been really busy the last few years. I've been a full-time musician now for about eight years now. Um, I started, you know, in local Houston bands, playing in a band called Perfect Disease. And then I played in a, a band. We've been a band now about, about 12 years now called Black 13 out of Houston. And I've always done that kind of thing. And then I was like, you know, my chance is going to come one day. Somebody's going to call and I'm going to take off and go play music. And I got that chance when I joined a band called Dead Horse Trauma from Des Moines, Iowa, and uh, I've become their bass player. So I've been, uh, I've been with them now about five years, six years, and I've been to 33 different countries playing music with them and touring. So, like, I did that, and we got really busy, busy, and I did, like, 200 or 250 shows a year on the road for the last four or five years with them. Whoa. And, yeah as a bass player. And I was like, dude, this is sweet. And then dead horse trauma kind of got slow. Uh, uh, Eric has some, you know, life things he's got going on. We took a little slow break and we've still been on a break. And I was like, well, man, I, I don't ever want to slow down. I want to go fucking harder. <laughs> so I, I, I started screaming at the sky and it's the very first band I ever played guitar and sang for. Um, mm -hmm. it's, I never sang for a band. I was like, let's like, I'm just gonna like, you know, nobody can be replaceable in the band. Like I was just like, fuck, I'm tired of being like everything being the downfalls because somebody gives up on me. So I was like, I started something nobody could take away. Somebody, nobody could do anything. And here I am now, played my first show in uh, 2020 with Screen at the Sky and now already national touring across the U.S. That's, that's fucking insane. That's insane. So when did, so you started Scream at the Sky, what, 2018? I, I started to, uh, in 2018, so for the last two years, I've drove and worked for bands across the U.S. and Canada. Um, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to drive for bands, I'm going to network, I'm going to meet people, and I stuck Scream at the Sky stickers on every fucking pole, every gas station, every place I could go, I stuck a fucking sticker. So I marketed the band for two years, and then I played my first show in February 2020 this year. Wow. Oh, yeah. What wow. a year to yeah. start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well that's kind of how that's why how i felt about it i was like yeah what a year to start start a brand new business brand new band and it's like now you can't do anything uh i was like yeah that's not that's not an option i can't fucking not n not play music and i like i only played one show how can i start a brand new band and not keep going and get my name out there right yeah. Which is something that you've done. You, we, we've talked to quite, uh, a few bands this year, uh, especially during the pandemic. You're the first one uh, who's played a show since February, basically, that we've talked to. Um, yeah, it's, it's been interesting. Yeah, what has that been like, man? Like, I, I kind of, like, I haven't, like, I'm used to going to anywhere from, like, 20 to 30 shows a year. And, you know, in a, like, 
I really felt it this year. So like, give me the, give me the details. Like I want to live vicariously through you a little bit. (laughs) So, so we like, like we, we booked a bunch of stuff in the beginning of the year. Uh, uh, so that towards the end of the year, now we had a lot of good stuff ready to go. And I was like, all right, cool. Like we're going to get out and do some touring and stuff. Like I only play my hometown in Houston two times a year. We never oversaturate our market. And that's why I, I created a band like that. I was like, nah, man, uh, I want to tour and tour only. So we, we like went out and by like, I don't know, man, I don't know what allowed us to do it. It's been complicated. Booking has been super weird. Um, some shows there has been like, people sitting at tables wearing masks and like social distancing hardcore but then some states and some shows are rock and roll business as usual usual um definitely people want to see shows there's lots of bands out there that are actually touring but they're not saying anything because of like you know there's like lots of fucking people that are slaying you're damned if you do and damned if you don't there's lots of people out there just slaying bands because like oh you're killing all your fans you're out there doing this but like, man, we've been just, like, doing the best we could. Like I said, I couldn't start a business and then be like, all right, we're no longer going to uh, go out, and now we're just, like, dead. Have a nice day. We'll see you next year. I was like, whoa, I couldn't see that happening with us, man. It was just, like, right. not, not not acceptable for me. Mm-hmm. So through hell and fucking high water, man, we've been uh, we've been on three tours this year already. Um, we did one in, uh, up to uh, Salt Lake City in the West Coast area. And then we did two in the Midwest already. Uh, we've, we've played uh, Ohio, Wisconsin, uh, Des Moines, uh, South Dakota, Missouri, Oklahoma, Indianapolis. We've been playing like the Midwest pretty a lot. We played um, – Texas was shut down for a really, really long time, and now it's pretty much just opened up. And uh, we don't, we're slaying dates in Texas this month. You know, we're, we're booked all over the Lone Star State. There's, it's a big fucking state. So, like, you know, we, we have lots of choices that we can go see places. We're, uh, this month alone, we're playing uh, Dallas, Arlington, uh, Fort Worth. We're playing Beaumont, Texas, Port Natchez, Texas, San Antonio. Uh, we're staying busy. Like, we're just like, whatever it d- does to, t- to get a brand new band out there and try to do what we can, man. Wow. So, so you have, you have, that's, that's, that's incredible. And absolutely. I agree with you. It's, and you know, uh, you know, you you got, you got to follow like whatever guidelines are in place or whatever, but you know, if, if, uh, so, so you have played a metal show to people sitting down in masks. Yeah, man. We played uh, Des Moines, Des Moines, Iowa, and people were sitting at tables for, for to a table and like, I mean, they were just as rowdy as any other place, you know, they were, it, it was, it was super different. Uh, for me, live shows is about the experience and the feeling that I get in the interaction with fans, you know, and I want to, I also want to say that we do everything we can as a band to, to make everything safe as possible too. you know, like we're not just going out there, just fucking everything up. We, we do our share of social distancing. Um, but most of the time it's business as usual. So like we just, whatever it takes to make a successful show, man. That's awesome. Yeah. So you have, have you, oh, go ahead, Aaron. Have you guys, have you guys had to do anything like crazy or like to kind of get past a lot of the restrictions or is there, is it most, as most, cause like that's, that's the thing that I've been noticing as far as like, like bands trying to, to put shows together and like during this time is it's very like, you gotta kind of jump through hoops and kind of do a bunch of like have yeah. so, or kind of ways. So I was just wondering if there was any, I'm always interested in hearing about that right now. So like with my booking here lately, uh, some of my best shows have been last minute kind of things like put together within two to three weeks and then promote them hard, make the promoters promote hard. And we've had some really great, like sold out good shows. Also um, I think, you know, shows are going back to an underground style market, lots of house parties, lots of uh, like shindigs, people's front yards. Like that's the kind of stuff. And we, (coughs) there's, there's people out there straight paying people to, uh, play house parties that are just super dope. Like I said, lots of bands are out touring. They're just not saying anything about it. We, we, we did, we did a tour in, in, uh, in the Midwest with a band. I I just, I don't even want to name the band, but like they, they, they they didn't say shit. I kept asking promoters like, dude, what's going on? Like, is this band even going to be there? Like, what's up? And they're like, yeah, they'll be there. They're just not saying anything. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's been kind of weird. I've also, uh, I also, like I said, I work for bands. So just this uh, last couple months, um, I recently worked for Steel Panther. 
over in, in, in Katy, Texas, when they came through and we had, they had such a straight COVID rider that was, it's so insane. Like we had to change gloves as employees every like hour and put a new mask on. It's really by the band or the place. Ah, that's fascinating. That is very interesting. And fuck yeah. Shout out to Steel Panther, one of the greatest bands going there. <laughs> Dude, they were super rad. I got to I got to be the runner for the day. Oh. I took them all over. Play was super rad. I, I worked for quite a few bands in in the industry, and I just do it to network. Like I make sure I tell them that too. Like I'm not here to be like your slave, bud. I'm here to mm -hmm. like learn and work my ass off for you, so I make an impression upon you. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah Hell for yeah. sure. That's sick. Awesome. True, the true spirit of perseverance, man. That's awesome. Perseverance yeah. On, like. Yeah, you got – I think, like, in today's society and today's, like, music world and all that, you got to make an impression on people, for one, or nobody really gives a shit, you know. And, two, you, you still got to have that passion and drive to keep going. I'm like, every day all I can think about is music. Every day I wake up, I think about music. I write music every day. I mean, I just can't never stop thinking about it. I have like a drive like no other. And it's super hard to find people like that anymore in the music industry. Some of the guys I work for are just like, I'm here for the paycheck. Have a nice day. Right. Bust, you know, and I'm like, man, it disappoints me when I'm like sitting there. I'm like, dude, wake the fuck up. There's thousands of people out here begging for this opportunity or like whatever about it. I'm like, well, fuck up. And I'm going to just slide right in. I'm ready to fucking destroy. Uh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah. Uh well then uh what uh do you have any uh what what would you say some of your favorite uh metal albums uh that have come out so far this year? Like of 2020. Ooh, this year. Um shit, man. That's a hard, you know, a hard thing for me because of the fact that I listen to all styles of music ah. and, and and like not just one, even with Scream at the Sky, when I write music, I, I don't put any kind of influences on what I write. I just like, I play like me and I, I sing like, like I do, you know? So listening to music, I'm always listening to new bands. Like I even like, I like hip hop. I like techno. Like one of my favorite bands of all time um, is, is the Browning. Um, I liked how, mm. how they, they put in their, the, the, the techno style and dance style music with the metal and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And the bass, the bass drops, the bass drops sold it for me with them. Like when, when I just put that on and it would just shake my whole fucking chest when that shit would hit that, I was like, that's, that's like, wow. I was like, yeah, I like that. So I, I just went from there with the metal thing, dude. And like listening to music. Like I said, I listen to all, I might listen to like um, Tom McDonald and then I might listen to King 810 and then I might go all the way and listen to some like Texas Red Dirt artists or, or um, I recently drove for a bunch of industrial bands. And I listened, I was never into that. Um, and I, I, now I listen to this band Grendel uh, quite a bit, Ghost Feeder. Um, there's like lots of, lots of uh, bands. Uh, I, like I said, it's hard for me to say because I like all kinds of music. Oh yeah. Well, that's awesome, dude. That's awesome. I was, I, I was, I was going to make a comment because as I was listening to the, the EP that you guys put out on, on Spotify, uh, the first song I was like, I was like, man, there's like a ton of bass drops in this. Like, <laughs> that's sick. I was like, I wonder if there was any, like, any, like, you know, definitely with, with the Browning with that, like you bring them up. Cause like their, their first, their first album, like that was all over the place. And I was a big fan of that as far as just those big moments that just kind of like punch. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's my favorite album, by the way, "Burn This World." And I've had the mm -hmm. pleasure of talking to Johnny and oh. Noah, the original drummer, and all them. And I've I've said my piece with them about that. Like I love everything they do. I love it, but "Burn This World" and 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 the the message that came out that set me in this fucking. I was like, yeah, that's that's sweet, man. Like mm -hmm. I said, th the production of the album and everything was just like I was. I thought that was super cool, man. For me, yeah, kind of it kind of and it's like a heavier "Born of Osiris" to me. Like yeah. a, a little less technical, but more like like a little more straightforward stuff. Yeah, uh, let's say, I haven't listened yeah. to them in a little while. I see they released quite a few things since then, but yeah, that that album to me, I was like, this is something different. Like this sounds pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and you know, so like I, that that kind of stuff intrigues me. And then I like you know my my current bass player uh, is Ron. He plays in a band of the Convalescents. He's also my brother. 
and like my, we own a business together, but like, I listen to like me and Ron, I, I, I kind of like write some t stuff with him all the time. When we're sitting in here, he always doing some kind of pr- production. And I'm always like, Ron, nah, man, you got to like play that a little tighter. So we, we listen to all styles of music, whether it's super fucking heavy all the way down to like soft stuff, man. You know, it's, it's really weird the way I write music. Hey, I listen. Ron from the convalescence is, is scream with the sky's bass player. Yeah, that's my. He, not he's, realize he's, that. All right, so he's 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 not my my full time bass player, but okay. ever since the beginning of Scream at the Sky, Ron has played with me. Um, all my guys started out in the project to be like, "Hey, we're gonna help you get along, and and you know, so you can get out and get some stuff done." And we all had the same drive, and and I've played in bands with Ron many times. But Ron currently, right now, is my bass player for Scream at the Sky. I'm looking for a full time bass player. But uh, Ron and me, we just help each other out quite a bit all the time. So Ron's been playing with me. Ron's played every every Scream at the Sky show from the beginning, pretty wow. much. Oh, yeah. Ron, yeah. He, he is a badass. I've seen – Aaron and I have seen Convalescence many, many times, and uh, Keith has actually been on the show before. So that's, that's crazy. Yeah. That's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, me and, me and Ron, uh, we, live, we both live here in Houston. Ron lives oh, wow. in Willis. I live in Montgomery. Um, we live like 20 minutes from each other okay. and uh, a funny story I'll tell you about Ron that I met. I met Ron uh, 10, 15 years ago and off a of Craigslist ad. And he was like, we, I was looking for a bass player then uh, or to play for the band. And he's like, yo dudes, y'all live in Montgomery. And I was like, yeah, man, we live in Montgomery. He's like, he ended up living like four miles from me. And he was like, we talked, everything sounded good. And right before he hung up, he said, Hey man, I got to ask y'all something. And I was like, what's that? He's like, Hey man, y- y'all, y'all smoke weed. And I was like, yeah, man, I smoke weed. And he was like, yeah, man. Cause I can't be in a band where they don't smoke weed, man. It just wouldn't <laughs> work out. And that's how I met Ronald Bucky from the convalescence. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. dude! <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, yeah. That's a <laughs> yeah. That's a great story. Oh man. Yeah. I figure I need to share that with y'all how I met Ron and me and Ron like but like he we've been like we've been up and down um we me and like I said we're pretty much full time we're we're more than blood brothers man like he he just sure. we just been we've we've been ups and downs families moms and dads uh passing and all that like that's my straight up my 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 full time homie brother man fuck yeah Fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Ron and the Convalescence, definitely. Yeah, shout out to Keith and all the guys from the Absolutely. Convalescence. Mm-hmm. Super rad. All awesome fucking dudes. Got hella passion and drive. They, yeah. Like, I base a lot of stuff off of Scream at the Sky off of like quite a few bands that like I'm in the industry. One being the Convalescence and how that how they drive and how Keith's business and work ethic is. Um, also another band, Hemlock, how Chad and them and also dead horse trauma i learned a lot of stuff from them guys and on how to work a band in the industry and that's why i'm currently because of just paying attention and and that kind of stuff so shout out to all those bands especially keith and them on on the way they work their bands and their business business and work ethic and professionalism yes how how did you like was there was there a point where like you decided to to as far as like like that you were going to sort of help out and like like be a part of that like it, it was there was there something that kind of like made it click for you or was there like a certain like what i don't know like as far as like like valuable information and stuff that you kind of take with you like was there anything that like when you were first starting that just kind of clicked does that make sense sorry as far as like like going out and touring is that what yeah. you're asking yeah like is there is there cause it, it, or did, like how did, how did you start with with the like, touring you, industry yeah yeah well, like like I said, I I I'd seen uh, I seen the band Dead Horse Trauma in Houston at, at one time, and I was like, oh well, cool. Like, where's your bass player? And he's like, oh, he's at home. And then like I said, I got a chance. Um, uh, it's all about like your it, the, how much you as a person really want to give it hell, man. Like I always knew my whole life that I wanted to play music. I always knew that my chance would come um, that I was gonna go play music. Uh, because of the fact like I- I've been married now 13 years and I even told my wife before I got married I was like my time's coming and I'm I'm fucking going nobody can stop me like it's not happening so that time came and dead horse trauma was like all right 
send us video after video. And I sent video after video. And I was like, man, is this even worth it? What the fuck is happening? And then it was like, they gave me a chance. I said, hey, all right, so now you can drive to Picayune, Mississippi, which was six hours for me, or you can drive to Des Moines, Iowa. It's, ni- it's 16 hours, 950 miles from Houston. And I was like, well, fuck it. I went to uh, Des Moines. I mean, I went to Picking, Mississippi. I stayed with them. I helped write the Life album. For, I stayed in there for three weeks. We just clicked. And now they said, hey, man, um, all right, we'll see you in Des Moines in two weeks. It's time for you to fucking, we're going on tour, 45-day tour. Let's roll. So I fucking jumped in a van, and I ain't never drove that far in my fucking life. I was like, let's fucking do it. Like, let's fucking haul ass. So I jumped in a van, and I, I hauled ass there, and that's how I got my start. It's about, I think it's about mindset and power, man. If you want it, you can achieve it. And that's how I did with Scream at the Sky. I just like, I was like, fuck it. I never sang for a band. Let's go and try it. Like, let's do it. I always, I was all that, you know, I was like, let's fucking do it. I think it's about mindset, about if you really want it, and also taking a chance at an opportunity to get out there. Like, if you get an opportunity that you see is worth running for, run for it, man. Like, that's all I do. I just dive head first as hard as I can and put everything I got into it. Yeah. I was, well, was going to ask you about the, the vocal style thing, too, because you said that that was the first band that, that you've done vocals for and played guitar with. Was that, yeah. was that tough to get used to? Was that, like... Well, like, so I've always been a bass player. Like, I play bass in most bands, and I've always done backup singing um, and stuff like that. So um, I was just like, all right, um, now you just got to do it. And I'm, I'm a very energetic, like, if you use, like, I just get crazy as hell on, on stage. I'm a very high energy, jump around, crazy face, just get crazy as hell. I put all my energy into my movements when I'm on there. So I had to learn how to take all that and then go and sing and play guitar and not be fucking sloppy at playing guitar while you're doing it. I just had to learn to do that all in one thing. And I was like, I write songs because I write all the music for Scream at the Sky. Everything you hear is stuff I wrote. Um, and then I, I have, I play most of the parts on the album. And then I had um, I had my uh, one guy play the drums on the album, David Pinkerton. He's my current drummer. And I had um, – and so I did most of everything else. And I had Jeff do it on the album. So I, I was like, well, fuck, I got to learn how to do this. So I write songs, and I still currently this day, I'll write a song. But there's no fucking way I'm going to be able to play and sing that. What the fuck? And I just play it and play it and play it and try it and just and slop through it enough times until it just clicks in my head again and – it all kind of just clicked in and I'm still learning every day how to be a front man, how to do it and, and keeping the endurance. And, um, cause I sing a lot of different styles of vocals. I have a very high range to a very brutal scream. Um, so I try to do, I just, it, it took, uh, learning from endurance and playing it over and over and over again. And just mindset, like I said, just like, all right, you're going to do this. And that's what I did. That's what it took for me to be, to be a singer front man, vocalist kind of guy. Go ahead. I have such an admiration for for that because it's like because I've I've done a, as far as like trying to add like backing vocals and stuff like and playing drums at the same time it's it's a whole different but as far as like like singing and screaming and playing guitar and like having it be on a different time and everything like that like that's that's insane yeah, like, <laughs> yeah always, it's it, it's crazy sometimes bro when I'm like whoa like every day I feel my my voice getting more and more like i guess you could say the word powerful um there's sometimes I, I do screams i'm like whoa that was really cool like even now in my new pre-production just a couple of days ago i wrote something i was like man this is probably some of the heaviest screaming i ever done in a, in a good while um and sure. but on uh, with the screaming thing i told myself with, with scream at the sky like I, I, we're i consider scream at the sky a hard rock band um, we can hang with some really, really, really heavy, heavy bands, but also we can, we, we can play with hard rock light bands. Uh, I write all styles of music, man. Um, I'm always be a metalhead for sure, but I, I kind of wanted to write music that I could do for a career um, and that I could do in, for a long time. Um, I don't want to be like 70 years old and trying to like brutally scream my stuff. It'd be fucking sweet. Awesome. And it's realistic. It can be done, but I could persuade that and save myself for a, and try to shoot for a longer endurance. I think, you know, it's just a tact that I think in my head. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it like that. As part like you're just your vocal style is very, very, it's very like, especially like Save Yourself. That was the one that it, I you got that title right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it was it was with uh, like with the single and stuff and like just hearing hearing the really high like chorusy uh, kind of like hook for it and then it goes into like this this harsh vocal style or whatever. Like I was just I don't know it just blew me away, man. Like <laughs> it's cool yeah, to, like, to hear that. I, I like to write hooky choruses like that. I, that's one thing I always like was good at, and like that I like to do. Um, I was like, I, I want to do hooky stuff, and uh, and when I when I started screaming at the sky, I was like, uh, everybody expects me to do something super metal. Like that's what I've done a lot of. I, I've always been a brutal backup singer, or just like putting the extra edge that it needed on there. So on, on my first thing that I ever dropped for the band, I dropped an acoustic song um of of a of a song that we were gonna uh get put out and i went and did a very sick professional video shot it all over the u.s um but i put an acoustic song just me singing so to to stop people like oh what the fuck is happening right now and then i was like so that's why when i put save yourself out i wanted to put something out heavy this time because i was like i can i do it all like i was like uh let's try it all it was just weird because everybody expected me to do metal so i was like I can sing too, guys. Like I know I can. Like let's try it. And, uh, and it's so, the most metal thing ever. It's like, oh, I'm gonna do right. something you don't expect. <laughs> yeah, man. It like does, I said, I can. It it does it does kind of remind me of like like Seven Dust or like Linkin Park as far as like the 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 music of it. Like it's very it's very heavy, but the vocals kind of soar over top of it. Man, I, you know, I'll take that any day, homie. Like I, I, I like to say that I'm a unique, a unique person because I only kind of sound like me. But the, you know, the thing is, is I'll take that any day if I could be successful as any one of those bands and do the shit that them dudes are and still tour like them dudes are now. I'll fucking take it, man. Hell any yeah. day. <laughs> Hell yeah! No, I like. Okay, so you you developed this vocal style uh, for "Scream at the Sky," correct? Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. it's just what I sounded like when I when I scream and when I sing. Like, I don't try to imitate anybody. I just like I just that's how I sound. P some people ask me, "How do you have this like r rawness on your voice?" I was like, "I don't know. That's just how it sounds when I when I do it." Like, I you know, I, I can't really explain why I sound like that. It just sound like that. How? Yeah, and the the, the uh, see because what? Uh, yeah, like the music does. I love how you like incorporate and marry the sounds of metal and but you still have that like uh like a techie side of things there's some like keyboards and those kind of sounds so you you write all parts of the songs you write all the music yeah yeah i wow. I, I i i do uh, all the production on the albums i do all the vocals that you hear is me all the guitar parts was me wow. um i i had uh on my current ep i had uh my brother jeff hoover uh, from the, he's a singer of Black Thirteen. He was like, "Hey, I'll play guitar for you, but I don't want to sing in this band." And he's the baddest ass fucking vocalist I ever heard in my fucking life. You get a chance, you need to check out Black Thirteen. Definitely. Super fucking amazing. But he told me so. We, me, David, and um, uh, and Jeff went to uh, uh, to Lubbock, Texas, and we had James Gilbert, which was the guitar player, Hem Hemlock, uh, help me do um this album to record it but uh, about 80 percent of the playing on the album is me but all the songs bef are, are written by me um that that have gone in of course like people like ron and and dave and jeff have always like helped like they always put a little influence on them and help me we always produce songs how they go but everything you hear it starts as a mental image in my head i write i it's like all right i write complete songs i i I'm at a point right now where I kind of write one to two songs a day normally. Wow. Um, um, when, I, when I'm not, when I can set my mind to it, when I'm not working and when I'm doing that, sometimes I wake up at like two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, fuck, I just want to write a song. Thanksgiving, I woke up, I wrote a fucking song. I was like, let's do it. Like sometimes it comes in my head. Sometimes it starts as a little bitty noise. Like sometimes it'd be like a, and I'm like, whoa, that's it. And I'll make noises to other noises. Like I don't, I don't know how to read music and I don't know, I don't know how to write music except for just hearing it and playing it onto like, or in my head or just remembering what I play. That's how I write music too. I feel music. Right. God damn. 
Hell yeah, man. Hell, and it, I feel like I, feel, I do feel like that comes through on this EP, like between that and and the 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 way you guys marry so many, the way you marry so many different sounds, and uh, the way it all comes together. It's it's yeah, it's phenomenal. And honestly, like at least uh, what would well okay? Would you uh, what would you say you're like vocally? Uh, your biggest influences are. I'm really curious about this. Ooh. See, that's that's crazy too, you know, because when I grew up, I I listened to lots of punk rock. Um, oh, yeah. One of my one of my favorite bands would would be a band called No Effects. Yeah. Um. So I've been yeah. I've been told a, like uh, uh, from quite a few like professional musicians that I work for like man, you sound like Fat Mike. You sound just like, I'm like, what, dude? No way, man. No fucking way, dude. Um, like, so I listened to a lot of that. Um, I listened to like, I don't know, lots of Kill Switch Engage. I don't know. I listened to all kinds of music, dude. Like, so it's really hard for me to put a vocal styling again. Like I said, it's like, I sound like me. What uh, would you, what, um, what made you make the decision to go with clean and like screaming style vocals? Um, I just, I didn't want to be, like I said, I wanted to be something I could market. I wanted to do something I could chart with maybe once or like fucking like, like, I don't know. Like I never, I never done oh. anything. I just, I just wanted to do so. I just wanted to like, write right. <laughs> I, I kind of wrote what was on my head. And if it came out like that, it was like, that's how it was, you know, it and was weird. Honestly, that was one of my first reactions uh, to hearing to hearing "Scream at This Guy" for the first time. Uh, I was like, "How the fuck is this band not like in regular rotation on the radio already? Like this is this is what like this is perfect. This is very accessible for a very wide audience to bring people into heavier music." Um, and yeah, like that that was one of my first thoughts. So I definitely feel like. But yeah, you, you, you have the absolute right sound for that. Um, and personally, honestly, like I do have to say, like when I, at least from your, your clean vocals, I get a very like, uh, uh, like a Jonathan Davis vibe of corn. Like I, I've, I've, I've got that a, a couple really? of times, I, I, uh, quite a few times, actually. Um, I've always listened to corn, like in, in, in my time. I mean, who the fuck hasn't listened to corn in their right. fucking life? Right. So like, I've always been fans of corn. I got a chance to go out with a band called birthday massacre back, um, in 2017 when I was, uh, right. Or it was 2018. Uh, and I went out with them and they were on tour with Jonathan Davis, um, in his band. So I went out with them. Um, I met John one or two times. I met Brian head Welch on that tour. He was super rad. Oh, nice. Um, but I got that quite a few times. But you know, a lot of people here recently have said, "Y'all, your guys are heavier live for some reason." I don't know. Oh, I I definitely believe that. But it's it's just a kind of like it's like a raw, a more raw version. I don't know. Like I don't uh, that, that, that that I think I don't think you sound exactly like them. But like I just kind of get a vibe, and, yeah. I, and I love it. I think I think it it goes really well with the harsher vocals and the breakdowns and everything and the big drops. Like I think it it marries together. Like yeah, very like good. once again, if I could be as successful as that guy, dude, I'll take that right? any fucking day. That dude, like once Man. again, like Jonathan Davis himself has a, a pretty unique voice. Like you hear his voice, it's his, it's him. You know, it's him. It's like mm -hmm. no matter what he does, he's great at disguising and stuff. Um. Like, actually, when I was on that tour with him, you know, he did a lot of songs from the Queen of the Damned album um, when, when they did that with, from the movie and stuff. So there was, like, lots of cool stuff on that. My industrial side of stuff that you hear a lot on the album, that recently came from, uh, one, being in driving for the industrial-style bands, like like Birthday Massacre and Grindel and uh, and bands like that. So, like, like I don't know. I... I I take I could take influences from being influenced in, in person by those people, but as far as listening to them or trying to sound like them, I never I, I never tried that at all for sure. Oh, no, that was, yeah. no, you 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 have a very very unique sound that stands out to me. Uh, it, it's 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 just a lot of different. Uh, uh, you marry together a lot of familiar sounds in a yeah. very fresh and new way. 
that I think, yeah, I think is fantastic, man. You know, we played a show recently in, uh, in Missouri, and, and a dude came up, and he goes, he said, hey, man, you know, uh, y'all motherfuckers are badass, man. I really like y'all. You know, uh, but y'all, y'all, y'all sound a little bit like Blink One Eight Two, man. And I was like, <laughs> "What?" And he's like, "Yeah, man, y'all sound a little bit like Blink One Eight Two, man, but it's good, man. It's real good. I like it." And I was like, "Once again, I told him the same thing. I was like, cool, man. I'll fucking, I'll take that one too, man. You know, like, I've had some weird. <laughs> that was one of the weirdest ones I heard, though. Like, y'all sound like Blink One Eight Two, man. That." Yeah, I, I don't. I don't get that from it. That's why. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, um, yeah. Oh, how late in the night was that? <laughs> uh, that was at the end of the set for sure. Uh, we were the, we were the headliner there. Uh, oh, yeah. It was a t- it, it was the typical American redneck kind of guy. That I mean, you know, I don't like stereotype people, but overalls and some boots on and and. And uh, and a, and a good clean cut shirt, big old hat. You know, not a cowboy hat, but a, a trucker hat. Like he looked like more of a, a big trucker. So he was like, "Hey, man, y'all sound a little." Like, I didn't, I didn't think that he even knew Blink One Eight Two. You know, as as a, as a person. But then I was like, "All right, cool, I'll take it." Like, fuck it, man. <laughs> that was that was what I was gonna say. Like you're describing somebody that that just I'd be more surprised if they even know who they're talking about. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. That's how I felt. But you know, I, I try to be courteous and kind to every person. Yeah. If it's a if it's a compliment, fuck yeah, dude. Like I appreciate every compliment I can get and. Every, every person even took the time to pay attention to what we're doing, you know? Absolutely. So that's what yeah. – I was like, hell yeah, man. Fuck it. We're Blink-182 now, bud. <laughs> <laughs> we made so, that joke. So, yeah. Um, have you guys ever uh, – no, not – I don't think Scream it, well, have you ever uh, played a show in Michigan by any chance? Um, we <laughs> were scheduled to play Michigan on <laughs> our last tour. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah. But um, the dates didn't line up. I think the closest we've gotten to you is over at Carl's Tavern um, in over Ohio. In, in Ohio. Yeah. At, yeah. And we play um, we played Chicago, but – and like I said, Wisconsin. But we have not got a chance to play Michigan. But I, I look forward to it. We got a lot of fans oh. and friends there. I yeah. The second you guys are here, we will be in attendance. I absolutely promise that. That will hell uh, yeah, hell we'll, yeah. Uh, we will party for sure. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, can't fucking wait to get back to shows. So what? Um, ha, so on like with your like uh, playing shows this year. So you've gotten, so you've gotten you you had the experience of the people socially distancing and masks. It surprises me that they're. Like, like, cause when, you know, I, you know, metal show is everybody on top of each other, running into each other, sweating all over each other. You know, it's a very raw experience. That's um, the experience. Right. So it, yeah. it, it, it's, it's crazy to me that like a show was able to happen where they like the second, it, you know, the second you hear tsh, 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 that everybody's not throwing the fucking chairs and tables. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. That happens, man. Uh, like I said, it just depends on the show. You know, at Scream right. at the Sky, we're still a newer band. You know, we don't we don't draw fucking five million people into a room. Uh, I think that's harder as bigger bands to go out. I think right, right. now it's a great great time for smaller bands to thrive um, because there's still venues that are looking. There's still venues that are paying for shows to come through mm-hmm. um, and stuff like that. Um, it's all in about what you what you believe in and and all that. Like I said, we're not telling people to play shows, but we're not telling people not to play shows. We respect right. any of anybody or any band's opinion on how what they choose and what stance they take in, in today's market and what's going on in the world with the COVID and all that. So, you know, I wanna say that straight up. You know, that's yeah. just like we, we respect anything, anybody's decision and how they do. We're just uh, as a band, we are just trying to just do what we do best, you know. Doing the best you can, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. That's all anybody can do right now. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Um, so you now, so you've played many shows with many bands. You've, I'm sure, you've seen a ton of live shows and all the bands that you play with. You know, I'm sure you you watch them and stuff. Um, 
what would you say like the craziest or like your favorite show experience playing or just watching as a fan that you've ever had? Ooh. So, um, I've always been a fan of ICP. Um, okay. And, and Detroit. um, yeah. So I, I got a chance at Biggs in South Dakota to go out there. And when dead horse trauma was playing, we, we ICP, I mean, in a fashion, they kind of opened for us. They played, and then we went on after them on the main stage inside this place. Oh, wow. But so I was sitting there. My good friend Scott was like, hey, man, I got you a meet and greet for ICP. And I was like, whoa, all right, this is fucking sweet. Like, so I got to go back, meet him, hang out, do that. But it also, it gave me a chance to do Fago Armageddon with them at the end of their show. So I was like, all right. This is a fucking crazy experience, and I've always I've seen them I've seen them international ballroom in Houston. I've seen them all over the place um, throughout the U.S. But this in particular time, I got up there. I was all like in Dead or Strong, we wore war paint and black and stuff. So I put all my war paint on all this shit. I get up there, and there's crates of fucking Fago are coming in, and I'm and it's like. I must have blasted off 200 fucking bottles of diet root beer. I was fucking so uh, uh, violent Jay and shaggy and like 20 other people are right here, like right beside me on this fucking giant stage and I'm blasting shit off and it's fucking sick, dude. I was like, ah, oh, this is like heaven for me. I was like, I've never done this is sweet. Instantly I fucking grab a Fago bottle and I fucking, I'll show you look right here. I brought it all the way back from fucking from South Dakota right here ha. i brought it back oh, yeah. i took it off i ran straight fucking back inside and i hopped on stage with dead horse trauma I was fucking soaked head to toe and fucking fago root beer and rocked a fucking a house of eight eight to nine hundred people um and, and and so that experience alone was like whoa for me you know as a as a person mm. yeah that's well, fucking awesome to, to go from doing that and all of a sudden it's like, all right, well, I guess I got to go play a show. You know? yeah. <laughs> well, you have to go and, you, you have to go up there and be like cooler than them. You know, it's yeah, hard. Right? They're, yeah. they're, 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 you're playing in front of fucking a bunch of juggalos and shit. And they're like, oh, and like it's a hard crowd and a hard market sometimes. You know, like yeah. I've heard many of crazy stories about bands going to the gathering and just getting slayed by fans. Like, y'all yep. fucking suck. Yep. And I was like, ooh. Yeah. That'd be a hard experience. I didn't really think about that, honestly. Yeah. Like, it's like you had to go up after that, and it's like, I hope yeah. they like us. <laughs> yeah. No, we had a great show. That We killed it, dude. It was a great experience all the way around uh, for that crowd. But I've always took that stance with that side of things. Even when me and Ron used to be in a band called Without Your Lies, we would always uh, tap into that side of things as a rock, and, uh, as a metal band, and be like, yo, dude, we can play in front of, like, 150 people tonight at this house party. And like, at a, and like, we just had to have a bunch of juggalo rappers in front of us first, and then we'll just go fucking slay afterwards. And I, I've always been about the mentality of tapping into different markets like that. So mm -hmm. um, I think every band should open up their mind and try, you know, whatever, you know, yeah. tr wh wherever they could get exposure is a great, uh, is another chance to get into a new market. Uh, yes. Yes. That's, that's something I've, I've specifically, like, I think of them and I think of like strange music, like Tech Nine. Do a yeah, lot of dude. Stuff where he takes out a lot of like, like, kind of just a mix. Of, like, he, I mean, he has his his tours where he he brings out his artists and everybody like that. But he does a lot of shows, like much like ICP does, where it's like, like he did not fest and you know all this other stuff. And like, it's cool yeah. that there's there, there's you know that side of things where it's like it's very like you know doesn't matter as long as you you can bring it live and you have like this whole setup. Man, stuff. Like, it's all cool. I can say yeah. about both 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 them um psychopathic records or or strains they're both businesses business straightforward fucking that's 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 their key man they're just straightforward mm -hmm. business they're 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 legends now because of the business and how they do stuff and s stupid marketing stupid stuff you know i recently watched a video uh of icp smoking out and they said that hey man we didn't ever think about anything cool. We just put stupid fucking shit on shirts. Like this dude grabbing his nuts and then it's like sold a million shirts. We're like, what? Well, we never even thought about that. It's it's about just being creative, man. The creative markets on that side of things for sure too. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and it's also like uh, there's a side of it too in terms of like doing the show stuff. Like I, when you guys talk about this, I think of like hate breed and, and all the like how like these, these in kind of bands – or musicians that are like 
in between genres. They, they, they go in many different directions because they love all music. And because of that, it's like at one point in time, you know, f- for example, with Hatebreed, uh, they're, you know, they're too hard. They're too hardcore for metal and they're too metal for hardcore. So it's like, what do they do? But then, you know, fast forward all these years later, it's like the walls have come down quite a bit. And it's like, no, everybody loves everything. We all love hardcore. We all love uh, rap and, and metal and, you know, all these extreme forms of music. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's so like the, the more eclectic it gets, the more the different sounds come together, the more influences are, are it and are involved. And uh, the, the, I, I think it just adds to the whole scene and adds to the whole, like yeah. makes everybody more creative and wanting to do different, like more unique stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There, it, there's tons of bands that are doing like, you know, creative, creative stuff and they're not even getting heard. You know, there's like, yeah. there's, there's like, it's like it's a crazy market out there with everything going on, and that like the I, I don't I think if you're not out there trying to be unique and grow with the world or grow with the times, I mean let's face it, with like any band, like look at Metallica or look at like Godsmack for example, the, their album they came out with like 2018, it was super sweet. I liked it. I mean, but you, you knew still that it was Godsmack or or the other band by the way they sound you know it's them but you could tell that they're still trying to stay forward with the times Mm -hmm. um by writing creative music and staying you know you can't just stick in the old fucking times and that's with like any band like uh white chapel fucking that album they put out they got fucking they got slayed for that you know and like i i i kind of like that fucking song like on that that, that's that album i like it a lot it's a good album yeah yeah, i think so but they got slayed for it because people Mm -hmm. are like nah we, we like the heavy, you know. I was like, ah. well, you gotta, but, you gotta, yeah. you gotta, because like it's, I don't know, like it's, I'm kind of as far as like like Whitechapel and stuff goes, like that was that was one that for, was kind of a big one for me because like it was, I mean, they, it's it's not that they had never done like clean style vocals on a on a song, but it wasn't like I feel like the Valley really kind of like solidified the fact that they kind of had that as as something that they were able to to use, and as far as like. I don't know, just adding it to their sound and stuff. So it's, I don't know, you kind of get that. Yeah. Um, but I was, I was, I was going to ask you, like, because with, with a lot of your, your, like, vocal style and a lot of your, your influence and stuff, like, I was wondering about the lyrics and, like, where that kind of inspiration comes from. Like, All right. Kind of... So that goes back to me starting Scream at the Sky. So when I, when I created Scream at the Sky, I, I was like, I don't care. If Scream at Sky becomes a band, does anything, becomes a nonprofit organization, I wanted to um, do something positive for people and positive stuff. So in my lyrics, I try to write about positive situations, positive stuff, uh, that you're not alone, um, that there's lots of people facing the same kind of shit you are, um, you know, and stuff like that. I like to, to write songs about smoking weed and, and legalization. Fuck yeah. um, um, but I just kind of write off the top of my head. I'd like to, um, I believe there's like different style of lyricists. I think it's the words you to say. Some tell stories with big words, um, and, and that, that create long, long, stories that you can tell by multiple words put together and then i think there's uh lyricists that write as in um straight to the point easy uh slow lyrics um Mm -hmm. like jonathan davis for example um one thing like like simple like one two three go um like just simple words that any person in any language kind of can understand so i learned that from going to like um uh, to Europe and stuff with Dead Horse Trauma that, 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 uh, that even though some of them might not speak English, they knew, understood small words of, of English. So me as a yeah. lyricist, I write lyrics as simple as possible um, b- because one, I suck at spelling, man. Ron and all of them are always getting on to me because I, like, I write how I spell. I just talk how I talk. Yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I, I write simple stuff sometimes because I can't, I, I like, I can spell, but I'm not a complete idiot, but I'm just like, I just fucking misspell every fucking thing. Half the time. I just write, 
when I'm pre pro and I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, that, that's how it's spelled. I just <laughs> mem- <laughs> so I <laughs> simple simple lyricist is I guess is how I should how I should put mine straightforward to the point with positive message. Very very uh, Jamie Josta vibes, very like the heavy like PMA kind of stuff. Yeah. And very, a lot of like looking inward too. Like there's, I, I get that vibe a lot, and that's uh, that's really cool. Yeah, it's it's all like in in the scale of of like vocalists and stuff. I the, another person uh, like a, on a side of uh, like Jonathan Davis to me is Corey Taylor. Like he's he kind of in in some ways he kind of does both. Like there's there's definite songs where it's very like like straightforward. Like you kind of get it, but then there's other things that like there's a lot of metaphors and a lot of like you know other things that kind of like it's up to your own interpretation and stuff and so yeah i don't know i was just i was just wondering if there was anything that like just any inspiration or just you know kind of how how you write your lyrics really well i've I've been through a lot of crazy shit and done a lot of crazy shit so i guess there's lots of inspiration from stuff i've done um sometimes i write songs about people that are around me um save yourself for example um that was written about one of my friends had called me um uh, late one night and said that they had a problem and and that they didn't know how to how to do it or how to save themselves and i was like oh shit like what the fuck do i do about this you know um so i did whatever i could have just tried to be positive toward the person hey man you got this you can do this um it's gonna you know whatever I, i could say to the person um at the time and uh of course they made it through it they're doing better and stuff like that uh but i wrote that i wrote the song about about them um because it was was on top of my head i was like save yourself from this life uh save yourself from this nightmare i was like that was pretty cool you know um but i was like save yourself you want to live you want to die it takes you over this is it your last stand you know and i was like that's what i basically told the person like it was like you're this is it man like you're either gonna go to fucking prison or you're gonna someone's gonna find you dead man it's gonna be the end you know like i hate to be that brutal to you but um you need to find some help you know figure it out and of course he did got it fixed and that's what i wrote that song about so i just kind of write sometimes it's about situation that i'm that i've been in or somewhere that i I was around or like i said sometimes it was just i was smoking 10 blunts here in, in the studio and fucking inspiration out the ass (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was both ways. <laughs> yeah, that's. Would you? Would you say like you? Are you more drawn to to stuff that's a little more like along like per, as far as like listening to stuff like stuff that you can relate to, or is it kind of like kind of goes the other side where it's like I mean obviously you said you know, having such a wide range of you know interests and like influences and stuff. I just I don't know. If it has a beat, a good beat or a rhythm, and I can fucking rock to it, I'll listen to it. Like, mm-hmm. I, like I said, whether it's like drift core or fucking stoner rock or rap, or I listen. Like, I, I get on YouTube and I straight up just fucking look for anything that's come out in the last day, the last two hours, the last, and I just fucking listen. If it's cool, I'll subscribe to the channel. Go for it. You base it off feeling. If you feel it, yeah, basically, yeah. I guess, or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very similar in that sense. Like if it if it hits me, and it it can be anything, but if it does, it it does. You know what I mean? Yeah. When when I write music, it's like if I'm sitting there and I'm writing it. If I'm not doing like this myself, writing it, playing guitar, I'm like, nah, man, that fucking sucks. Rewrite. No matter how soft, how fast, how hard, um, whatever. If it's not making me move as a person, it ain't. How can it move my crowd? That's how I write music. Hell yeah. There's a there's there's a power to like writing something and listening back to it, being like, all right, like <laughs> I dig on yeah. this kind of thing. Like there's that. As long as you, you know, is there something about it that you like, and it's kind of that. So yeah, cool. that's like that bass, dude. You, that bass drop. Mm. Yes. <laughs> on stage, on stage, you just the way people's faces react to that stuff, and it went mm. like, I, like I said, I'm a very active guitar player, and I just come up, and that foot comes in there, and I slam it down at the exact timing. The whole place just, I mean, it feels like you're just Thor's hammer taking over, dude. Oh. It's, it's, I, I feel it, you know. Like that's how I write. I love the. I write music also to like how the how I, I see the crowd react. We'll revise songs till we feel like they're right, like until like. 
me and Dave will play them, you know? And it's weird because Dave has different musical influences. Uh, Dave's like a last 10 seconds of your life that he would tell you that's his favorite album that he, he got out or psycho stick is his favorite band of all time. And Dave's my drummer. So he, 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 he likes brutal, brutal, heavy, all that kind of stuff. And I like a lighter side, different stuff. I listen to all that when we're in the car driving 20 hours to the fucking Midwest or something. It's, we listen to, he listens to like horns and, saxophone with drum beats like one of them bands you would find in the subway system They're like eh, eh, burr, like <laughs> like dave i'm not listening to more saxophone songs man you know <laughs> <laughs> i know exactly what's like what you're talking about too there's like a couple of them that are on youtube that just every time it comes out it's like that specific yeah <laughs> man I, I, i'll listen to it i like all right that's cool it's got a groove but then there's like 20 in a row i'm like oh man come <laughs> on yeah. i need something yeah. i need something to get it <laughs> <laughs> what um do you have like okay so you've played you've played you said you've played in many different countries um uh with with that horse trauma uh yes you guys have um, any releases by the way what was that you guys have any like any albums or any like anything you've released like any songs like you check what's out? that with dead oh. horse trauma or yeah, yeah. dead horse trauma has seven studio albums oh, shit. um yeah um they've been a band uh for about 13 14 years now um they started a, a pretty cool like they got a great following all over the u.s and, all and over like when did you join dead horse trauma um the end of it was like january 2016 okay uh it's it, i, I want to say is the date i think we talked in december and then i went out and then we it was like that and i finally went out and met them and stuff i i started you know it was like around january february march of 2016 hell yeah I definitely want to check them out, but I want to start with the stuff that you're on. <laughs> yeah, man, no problem. Um, what? Uh, but like, so, oh, man, uh, there's not many people uh, that I've talked to that have played different countries. I, um, mm, I have only ever seen. Let me think. Yeah, I've only ever seen one show outside of the state of Michigan. Um, so I'm really curious to hear how like our shows different in different like countries like in any like notable way or anything or are they kind of like the same as here it's, <laughs> it, it's a definite experience man let me tell you that um one thing i can say is um me as a person i, I when i was there it was the greatest experience of my life um we lived on a bus 27 bunk double decker bus with four bands um, Whoa. I, I, I definitely think that people over there love and appreciate rock and metal a lot more. They like heavy music. Um, uh, there's stuff I like about there and the stuff I don't like about there. Like I could definitely say that I, I, I like America. I can tell you that for Whoa. sure. I didn't, I didn't take a shower for like 30 days. Um, <laughs> just because of some of the venues, you know how it is. It's bus life, dude. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, we, we, I, we, it was kind of weird. Like some of the places, like a lot of the places have stairs. You always got to carry your gear down stairs, but it was, uh, 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 the tours we did there. Um, we had texts and stuff like that that did it, but it was like, uh, I got sick there when I was there one time, um, for two weeks straight, I was like, dude, I'm going to die. I think these dudes are going to have to drop me off at like, um, some weird ass place hostel. So mm -hmm. like I would get, I would get off and I would go to these, these, these hostel like you would find like little crosses you would walk for hours and i find my medicine and the dude would just like not speak english you'd be like here man here, you take this and it, I, I would i would little white box with write, handwriting on it and i'd do whatever it took to got better <laughs> and, uh, uh, so but i finally got well but every day um i did 30 33 days there 34 days there and, and i played a show every day sick or not and destroyed so um, oh, yeah. it's, it's definitely a different experience. Um, it's all about once again, how you approach it, the tour that you're on. I, I've, I've heard lots of horror stories where bands got completely robbed and you're fucked. Um, I've heard that, but the experience I've had were really good. We went over with a band called Ectomorph. They're from Hungary. Um, wow. they're like, they're like the Kings of Kings of fucking Europe and Hungary. Um, great band. Zoli, uh, sh shout out to Zoli. Um, 
so we got a chance to go with them over there and do that tour. So that was super rad about the experience. Um, we brought them here, did 30 days here with them, and then turn we went there and, and did 30 days with them. So both tours were set up very properly and professionally. So I think it's about your agent, what you got going on. Um, De Dead Horse Trauma is a complete do-it-yourself band. So everything we did, um, it's same thing with Scream at the Sky, dead, uh, complete do-it-yourself. So I think it's about how smart you are uh, and where you're going over there. Don't just take anything and just – you know, then you'll find yourself playing some crazy places. <laughs> so, so is this like mostly Europe? Um, yeah, Europe. We did a, uh, we did um, fuck, dude. There's so many of them. I, I, I can't even count. No, we did you know France and we did oh, wow. all, all of Germany, Amsterdam. Okay. Um, we did. I went to Transylvania. I went oh. to Hungary. I went to Austria. I went to the Czech Republic um i went to a lot of cool places dude it was that's like awesome switzerland i went to switzerland i was like what yeah it was cool it was super super rad that's incredible that's incredible man what about like the uh like one one thing i know about european audience audiences versus american audiences is like they they do the whole like i i love live performances uh, like DVDs and CDs from uh, Europe shows because they always like sing along with like the guitar parts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's that's loud. what I was trying to say earlier about like simplistic lyrics. It's about like that's how I write lyrics. It's so like if I would go to a country over there or someone would listen to some of my music, it would be simpler for someone to understand because like I try to write the music to the way the crowd reacts. So Hell I want yeah. something. So I want something like if I went over to Europe or something, they could remember it and they would actually you would hear that hum or that fucking that power that you, that energy in front of you and that's what i like i want it i want like i was like oh i love that that energy so that's yeah. what i that's how i write that that exact right there man you explained it to the t brother that's oh. uh hell yeah um and you wait a minute ago though you did say like do you do you guys ever like uh like like before you release a track do you ever like play it live and maybe like make changes to it and then release it do you ever, like, um, so, test it out live? Sometimes. Um, uh, sometimes professional bands do that. Um, I've seen a lot of bands do it for their sound checks. Currently, um, like I said, Scream at the Sky, we only had a six-song EP out. So currently, yes, we play songs that are not recorded yet. So we're, we, we play them, and we've, we're seeing – we've made changes to current songs to see how the crowd reacts, stuff that we could do, stuff that we want to put on the album. I, I already have the second album written for Holy Scream at the shit. Sky, and I'm working on other ones. Of course, you know, I might take 40 songs there, and I might come out with 10. I might re re release all singles. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to fucking record some songs. Um, I have them all pre-proed. Um, like I said, I write all the music. I sit right here and just go. So I think our next album is going to be a little heavier because we like the heavier and lean, lean more towards the heavier side of things. Um the influences that me and Dave have, like I said, Dave has a heavier influence. So I think the drums are just going to slay a little heavier. Um, he just beats the fuck out of drums. So I think he's going to do kick ass on that. Um, and either me or if we find a current bass player or maybe even Ron will do the bass tracks on it. You know, like I said, we, the possibilities are endless. I want to do some collabs with people too. So I think it's going to be, we're going to have some heaviness in there for sure. Do you find like a, an advantage of like uh, of, of playing the song live before you release it? Like in terms of like like finding points to change and and where the crowd reacts and stuff like that. Is that like uh, uh, do you find an advantage in writing that way? I think that it improves the song um, for sure because like like if they'll move to it live, the possibilities are endless in the studio. So you mm -hmm. can even make the riff even sicker. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just write the perfect riff, I believe. And then sometimes um, you just write a song exactly how it's going to go. Save Yourself exactly was like not going to be on our EP. I was like, mm -hmm. I got in the studio. I went to go record five songs. And then I told James Gelber, uh, I was like, hey, man, I got another song. I wrote it on the road on my iPad. And I was like, hey, um, how much to record the song? He's like, I'll just charge you the same amount, dude. We're already here. I was like, I was already there for a week. I was like, fuck it. And I put Save Yourself on there. It wasn't even going to wow. be on there. Wow. Wow. Really 
That's yeah. wild, man. Yeah. Sometimes last minute stuff, you just write like a song, like, all right, that's it. it goes on there. Sometimes it just comes in last minute. Oh, yeah. Is it? Was it because I, I noticed on on like and I don't know if this is if this is how it was released or whatever, but I noticed on Spotify it was released as as a single and then the rest of the songs are with it. Was it was it a conscious decision to like release them all kind of like as their own thing and then put it out as like one piece and then kind of go into like a, doing like full length or was that kind of just like well, let's just make a collection of it? I think from the beginning it was just like I was like fuck dude where do I start I got to fucking put as much shit out as I can. I got to make motherfuckers know me. I got to market this shit. I got to make video after video. I got to do whatever I can. So I, I put the album out in February as a total. Um, and I was like, I think I wasn't, uh, I didn't have a wide enough fan base yet. Um, so we hit the road, like I said, and then I was like, well, fuck dude, we got a pretty good fan, uh, fan base and a wider market. Let's start releasing some stuff. Like I said, first video I released was acoustic and, uh, and, it got 1500 views, you know? And then a, a, a year later, exactly to the day, I really save yourself and it got 12,000 views, you know? So like, I mm -hmm. think us going out and putting into the market, it helped establish, you know, a further reach. So I was like, well, that's why I said, I don't know if I'm going to release singles or I'm going to go and do it. Today's market, most bands release singles, video, singles, video, you know, like, like, most most bands some bands don't even there's lots of people that believe that you shouldn't even write albums anymore it should just all be singles saturate the market um with as much media material as you can but also back it up with a great live performance you know yeah that's so. that's a lot of where where i've seen things go as far as like newer bands trying to release like it's more so like singles and like shorter eps which is kind of what like we've done we're kind of experimenting with it just kind of seeing like where it goes with everything and i don't know it's it's been interesting to see especially like within i mean mostly mostly like this year i think like the last couple i've seen i've seen a little bit of a shift in like more bands putting out like eps and and singles and stuff than than actual full-length albums so i didn't know if that was something that was like if you wanted to just like put it out as like a collect because they you know a band that i think of a lot when i when i sort of see that sort of thing is like spirit box been called spirit box that's been putting out a lot of stuff like that like they released a couple of singles and then like put it out as a big collection and stuff yeah man for sure so oh uh, do you have uh and i and i uh do you have a favorite like so you've toured you've toured lots of uh uh not just the united states but the world uh do you have a favorite like state or country like what's like, your favorite place to play mm. <laughs> iowa's always been pretty good to us we like iowa um if i did say somewhere overseas the czech republic was really fucking cool um yeah. like oh but that was unique Texas, like it's always been pretty cool to us you know we love texas that's because we well um, yeah the home state is probably usually going to be one of the favorites so yeah um south dakota at big we've done really well up there it's been really fucking sick for us um sioux city iowa man mm -hmm. always great there like we've like say um we're still a newer band so like as a band yeah. it's pretty hard but um, well, no, just I, you personally, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, fuck, dude. Uh, Ground Zero <laughs> in South Carolina used to be a fucking hot spot. Um, Aftershock in, in in Kansas City, you know, they used to be a fucking Merriam, Kansas. Actually, you know, that's great. Um, <laughs> fuck, dude. Chinese food restaurant in Oregon one time in Medford. It, it was pretty crazy. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, you're a fucking, you're, you're a real fucking road dog, man. Like that's, that's, and that's what, honestly, like, you, you know, uh, there's no, I, I say this a lot. There's no uh, formula. There's no proven way to like get successful in this there's no one way to do it you know what i mean but in terms of heavy music there there are a couple themes that i've found 
throughout like some of my personal favorite bands like Cannibal Corpse and Hate Breed and 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 bands like those and Slipknot even where it's just fucking constant shows can't like take every show you can hit it as hard as you can put stickers on every pole hand out every flyer like like it, that that's that seems to like i'm sure there's many many bands that i've never heard of that have done that you know what i mean but at the same time it seems to be a theme where like some of my favorite bands like they that's what they did you know what i mean hand out your fucking demos to everybody like you know what i mean like just just do all like the footwork you know what i mean yeah that's that's current that's my work ethic that i yeah. i've been like i'm still like old school man you know i don't like fucking do like i still hand out flyers i still yep. go to places. i still do all that fucking shit dude like like we're complete do-it-yourself band we print our own merchandise we make our own flyers and shit at the time. We fucking, nobody pays for our gas to go nowhere. We just fucking, like, we want it. We make it happen. Dude. Like, I, if there's a formula, tell me. I don't know. I just right. go out. I, I learn from the dudes, the professionals that I currently work from, dude. Like, I just watch them. Like, what the fuck are these dudes doing? So I watch them. I'm like, all right. Yeah, I need to apply that. If you don't like that, then, you know, like, that's it's a weird industry. You got to you gotta learn to adapt and, and just work hard you gotta you gotta want you gotta want to go 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 we live in a van man (laughs) yeah we live in the back of a van we don't get hotels every night so like that smaller bands gotta grind i believe that 100 percent. still gotta grind and that's the work ethic i was taught with any touring band that i work for dead horse throwing in grind 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 do as many shows as you can on the road you know you gotta build your fan base absolutely yeah and and yeah there's there like you just said there there you know i don't there's no formula but but of the bands that i love like many of them uh you you are following many of the same elements of the formula that they seemed to have adapted so it's yeah it that's that's the way to do it and man like you know too like i said like when i first heard you guys i was like like i feel like this ep should be blo- like i know you know it's just a six track ep but i feel like it should be blowing the fuck up because it's phenomenal we and we, it's- we, uh, we wish it we wish more people would hear it dude we're doing our best that's why we're trying to fucking play as many shows we like we, we appreciate that compliment homie thank you thank you thank you man genuinely genuinely and what uh who was uh hold on i got it right here um the track you 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 had a guest vocalist on the track "My Life," I believe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, who is that? She was phenomenal. Yeah, that's a friend of mine. She lives in Montreal, Canada. Her name's Lori Normandin. She plays for a band called uh, Era Nine um, that we that I that we used to tour with in Dead Horse Trauma. And um, I met her through touring, and I told her like, "Hey, uh, I'm gonna come to Montreal one day." I'm going to fucking do it. And one day I got a chance. I went to Montreal and uh, I wrote a song previously. And then she was like, Hey, I wrote some lyrics to the song. And I was like, what? I was like, let's do, let's hear it. And um, so she sung that part to me. And then I, I, we, I wrote the rest of the song and it was like a pleasure. Like she was just a friend of ours that helped us out. She was like, hell, hell yeah. I, I think she's the greatest female singer out there. I tell her that all the time. She's like amazing as, as a vocalist. Um, if you get a chance to check out any of the Era Nine stuff, dude, um, they they uh they do what they call trap uh trap rock, and it's 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 insane, man. It's what? it's it's great, great music, great hooks, uh, and uh, they they used to slay, man. I tell them every day their album that they release is, is one of the greatest albums that I like personally. I listen to it every day still. But Lori and and uh, uh, Jonah and all them guys in that band, dude. Era nine, sick it, fucking band. Is it E E R A like era like that? Yeah, E R A nine. Era nine. And what's the album? Era nine. What, what's 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 the what's the album title? Oh shit! I don't know. I don't oh, know the name. I think it's self titled. Oh okay. All yeah. right. Oh yeah. No, I yeah. I, was, I just wrote that that down. I'll definitely check that out. I wanted to. 
I wanted to say something about that one too, because that was like when I when I was listening through to it earlier, like just I hit that song. I was like, well, this is a just feel like pretty big change of pace from the others, but like it fits so well within the rest of it. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And she's outstanding. She's outstanding. Um She's a she's a very good vocalist, man. She has a very cool range. She plays in another band called The Collective, I think, too, man. Um it's like a, they do covers of stuff. Her and a pianist, chick piano. Oh. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um yeah, I love Aaron, Aaron knows like I I, I uh I definitely gravitate um a lot of times towards uh female vocalists, especially in heavy metal. Um especially ones that like like it, it, if there if there's a female vocalist that like I like clean singing, don't get me wrong, but if there's a female vocalist that just does the screaming like Angela Gasau from Arch Enemy or 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 um Alisa White Gloves also from Arch Enemy um you know or uh uh you know uh, uh I think her name is Alina Earhart Earhart, I think something like that from uh, Once Human. Uh, yeah, I, I fucking really love that shit. Yeah, yeah. It goes I, hard. I like. I really like uh, Tatiana from Ginger. Oh and, fuck yeah! I, I had to meet her in Ohio on Halloween once. She was playing with Devil Driver and, and me and the guys in Birthday Masker, and I got to hang out with her and her band. And she was the super raddest chick ever, dude. What was that like? Like a year or two ago? Yeah, dude, I saw Devil Driver and Ginger on that tour up here in Michigan. Swear yeah. to God, yep, yeah. I saw that fucking tour, man. Brutal, dude. Oh, man, I just recently got into. Yeah, dude, Devil. Oh, I fucking love Devil Driver. Fucking um, stage experience from both of those bands was intense, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and there's even there's even uh, a new. Well, not they've been around for a while. But they got a new album coming out. Uh, there's a band. I'm not sure where they're from. But there's a actually all-female band called Nervosa. N-E-R-V-O-S-A. I believe Nervosa. And they have two singles out off an album that's coming out in like a couple months. Hard as fuck. Like, oh, the mad notes, bro. Like, the, it's fucking insane. It's, yeah, I highly recommend check it. Like, just insane heavy neck breaking shit like it's nice. awesome nice. I'll uh, check it. yeah yeah but uh but yeah definitely fucking uh yeah that my life track is outstanding like uh it's yeah i really liked i really liked those vocals on it and it was it stood out but blend but also like fit in really well with everything else i felt like aaron said uh yeah like i yeah. said i don't to put a little, something different on there i didn't want to i don't want to just be like a, a metal album i just want to like hey fuck it let's let's put this on there. I, I thought it was such a good song i'm like who i like it i want to put it on there fuck it yeah hell yeah, yeah dude that was also cool about it to me it's like you just you got punched pretty heavily in the first for like three tracks and then you hit this one it's like oh it's kind of different like it's got kind of a cool cool sound to it yeah you know you know, earlier you asked me about like one of the one of my favorite live shows too, and what, and I was gonna say that it popped in my head instantly that me and Ron um, last year, Ron took me to fucking Acacia Strain mm. in this tiny fucking room that was <laughs> fucking the most brutal pit, and the the whole room was a fucking pit, and if you weren't moving, it was you were getting fucking hardcore slammed, and I was like, Ron. Six foot, seventeen foot, big guy. There, you don't want to be around that dude when the chairs start moving. That place, <laughs> the whole place erupted. It's, he's a, he's an experience in himself. Mm. Oh, dude, the Acacia Strain. They're like for one, that's like one of my favorite bands right now. Like I can't stop listening to Slow Decay. But that's that's like one of those things. Like their live show, man, is so just insane. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Feel them, like floor shake and just there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say don't get Aaron started on the occasion strain because he <laughs> go off. See, yeah. that's like a band right there. For example, that's a band I typically, uh, honestly, really didn't listen to. Bro, I've heard them, never paid attention. Ron's a super big fan of them, 
And I was like, all right, dude, I'll go. And I liked it. I was like, but it was brutal, dude. It was like the pit yeah. was the most insane pit I've seen in a good while, man. It was it was super, man. It was yeah. intense. They're they're definitely one of those bands that like seeing them live is completely different from this like the the like hearing them on record to me like it's such a different like there's such a I don't know, they just bring you into that world for like a half hour and it's like it's intense. Ron, like I I was intrigued by like the the way they their breakdowns and how heavy their fucking guitars and shit. I was like wow i was like i like that. i use some of that like listen to that kind of stuff i let that kind of stuff inspire me too i'm like my shit's gotta be oh. and I, but i try to like all right you can't be super brutal now brian that you went seeing acacia strain or this other one you gotta slow it down a little bit keep it in that groove i, I take them kind of a lot i love the grooves and stuff them kind of bands have and, and then mm -hmm. they put forth in there and their vocal styles are just commending like whoa yeah, well, I, like I, I always like the the kind of like darker, more ambient stuff that they put in. It's like they're like, is they their their sound and their style like they they came from kind of a more like deathcore, kind of hardcore, like scene. But a lot of, like they kind of branched out and they they like it's a lot of like the eerie guitar stuff and like the real like dissonant kind of stuff that just like when you hear it live and it's just like I don't know, I I'm a sucker for that, like. <laughs> it's a feeling like I, I can definitely feel that feeling when you when i listen to that kind of stuff too it's like ah oh, yes yeah it's like oh I shit it my soul <laughs> yeah chaos <laughs> yeah fuck yeah absolutely you got, a, um, you got a favorite album from this year i don't know if, we, if i asked you if we asked you that yet what was that come out this year like a favorite record that's come out this year oh um <laughs> That's all about slow decay. That's what I was thinking about it. I don't know nope. if there's one. Honestly, man, I, I haven't. I, 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 I'm not like a record listening guy. Like I said, I'm a click on everything or someone shows me something. I like it. Um, I like that new Architects uh, album mm -hmm. that, that yeah. they put out. Or that, that, the new video, a couple videos they put out. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. I like mm -hmm. that. Um, like I said, I, I like a lot of, of T Con stuff. There's like stuff that they've done. I'm like, man, that shit fucking cool. I gotta do something even cooler than that. You know, like I, I like I like a lot of that stuff. But it's hard for me to say one album that I actually actually listened to fully this whole year on. Oh wow. Hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Because we, I don't know, it's because we we usually do our like our like filthy fifteen list we call it, which is like the end of the year where we kind of touch on like things that have come out during the year like favorites and stuff so i don't know if there was one that like oh that's like as far as like like it's it's hard for me to, to see it from that angle because like i'm i'm the type of person that like when something comes out like i'm like sit with it for a little while you know i kind of have a different kind of scale of it yeah yeah i like uh top to bottom you know what i mean <laughs> Well, I, and it's I, I like I like the single side of things. Like I like hearing like specific songs or like newer like Architects. I'm glad you brought that because they're one of my favorite bands like ever. <laughs> I just love the the energy behind them and stuff, and like just how massive their sound is and stuff. And um, so yeah, like there's there's singles that come out, and then there's like full records to me that like it, it all kind of depends really. But I I usually like hearing the single with the record to kind of have like it gives it more context to me sometimes I don't know that personal that fucking new uh, Die Art is Murder single though yeah that shit is hard killing dude. season yeah, yeah killing season yeah killer oh man yeah. that shit woo destroyed me destroyed my neck um. <laughs> Uh, shit. Um, we've kind, I've kind of, yeah, we've kind of run through everything. Uh, there is, uh, always one question though, um, that I like to end with, man. Uh, uh, and is totally off topic of heavy metal, but it's another big, big interest of mine. Uh, may as well show them the poster. So, <laughs> the po all right, yeah, yeah, I got this poster over here that always in the crypt. The I Want to Believe X Files poster. Um and 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 so I, I'd like to ask everybody that's that's on the show, um, uh, have you ever uh had an experience in your life 
uh, have you ever experienced anything that you would describe as paranormal? Man, you know what? So, like, I don't – that shit kind of scares me, man, that kind of stuff. So my whole life, like, my mom, my wife, and them, they all talk about that kind of stuff and seeing people and I was like, all kind of crazy shit, like, through my life. So I was like, ah, man, I don't want to see that fucking shit. So when I go in there, I just close my – when I go to sleep somewhere or something – I go to fucking sleep. I don't wait up or I, I try. I, maybe I have seen something. Maybe I haven't. I don't know. So I, just, I try to tune that shit out. But like, I just like, oh, fuck. Like, I don't know. I don't, not that I'm scared of it. I was like, mm mm. Like, <laughs> you stay there. I'll stay here, bud. You're, yeah. You have a healthy respect. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I try not to, man. I'm like, oh, man. Uh, but like even even like outside of outside of like uh uh like ghosts and stuff like I'm even including like 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 Bigfoot or UFOs or a- anything like that. Um, some people believe it, and where I live is what Montgomery, Texas. That there's this what they call the Tall Man. I've always heard this, like legend of the Tall Man, and uh, hmm. a couple of my friends and cousins said they they seen it and heard it and they, they still say that they hear this screaming noise around i don't know like i said i try to tune the shit out even ron will say he's been scared in my, in my studio he heard like the tall man one time so, what's what's the legend of the tall man i've never heard of this yeah. i don't know i think it's like bigfoot or some big tall hairy man or something but it walks around butt naked in the woods i'm not sure it's like, and it, like screams and shit yeah kind of like a yeti or something all right all right. Oh, man, like I like I said, I try to what to ask Ron about the tall man. He said he heard this like he'll tell you the story. It's pretty it's pretty intense when he tells it. He'll laugh and laugh and laugh. It'll get you laughing. He was scared about shit his pants, man. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. No, it's 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 just like a it's a it's a big interest in mine. I do I do uh I go on paranormal investigations and stuff like that. And uh so I always like to ask people if they've ever had any kind of experience like that or anything i, I believe anything's fucking possible man and, and, and like fucking like I, I think that anything of that shit could fucking definitely be there and like have i seen in my own eyes not personally but i'm a believer in my own eyes if i see it fuck yeah you know the, it's gonna happen it's gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah <laughs> Fair. That's kind of that's kind of where I'm at with it. Like I've never, I've never like it, as as far as like being able to relate back to things. I've never been able to like to, like pinpoint one specific thing where like that's like that's actually happened. But I can tell that like there's just certain things that like I know for a fact that like I just all I need is a little bit of like proof, and it's like all right, well there's that. <laughs> like but it's always it's never it's never out of like questioning. Like it's 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 never yeah. out of the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um well shit man. Uh we we've, we've we've done uh we've done an hour and a half here. Um we'll probably wrap this up now. Uh th- please uh plug plug everything that that you want to plug. Scream at the sky. Where can we where can we uh hear the music? Where can we get the merchandise? Uh yeah, yeah. so we're a complete do yourself man. So I do everything, you know, shoot me a message, get a hold of me through email, scream at skytext at gmail.com. But um, anywhere you listen to music, Pandora, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, all the social medias, we're on all of them. Um, I'm very active in all my social medias. I talk to everybody. You shoot me a message, I'll make sure I shoot you back. Um, um, Always, you know, definitely check out the Save Yourself video. I have a brand new video coming out in December. For the oh. eight. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Be on the mo- looking for that on our YouTube channel. Oh, and um, always listen to fucking rock and roll and smoke lots of weed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. Um, yeah. do now I have a I have a personal question. Do is there any chance that physical copies of the EP exist? Yes, I'm gonna send you one. Man. Oh, dude! Got a care package coming your way already, big homie. I'm, I'm, I'm a hard copy collector, so that 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 would be fucking insane. Fuck yeah! 
Yeah, dude. I always, I always get the hard copies of every CD. Um, coming to my big guy, and I, and even if we get to personal deliver it, it's, but I, it's coming in the mail, and then we'll personal deliver one. We're gonna come to Michigan, bud. Oh man! Oh, and dude. when you do, we will be there, and we will bring the okay. party. I promise. We will throw, we will throw the fuck down. <laughs> Coming out of fucking Moss Retirement for this one. Holy shit. We look forward to it, man. We look forward to it. I, I, oh, God. I can't wait. Uh, it's been way too long since I've been to a show. That's for goddamn sure. Um, but, yeah, man. Uh, dude, seriously, like, thank you so much for being oh, yeah. on the show. Um, everybody check out Scream at the, Sci- Scream at the Sky. <laughs> Uh, I cannot thank you enough for for being on, man. Like, uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. This was outstanding. This was outstanding. Yeah. Good to good to finally talk to you. Yeah. Thanks nice for having me on um, and and playing that video and uh, and the reaction video, man. Thank you, thank you, thank oh. you, dude. All the support we can get, we need it. We're just a small time guy. We're just trying to step up a level of the day. Oh man, like a- anything, anything you ever want to send us, we'll we'll do something with. And yeah, that's abs- that's okay. that's all our pleasure, man. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah. And we can't thank you enough for being on. Um, and wait, so yeah, real quick though, uh, you 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 said you have the next album written. Yeah. And so, does that have like an uh, does that have any kind of like possible release window? Um. I'm going to try to stay active as possible playing shows, but um, I do have lots of plans of already sending stuff and, and getting with my producer to finish the recording. And then, I don't know, man, definitely next year, early next year. If not, you're going to start seeing ja- sent singles probably by January or February is when I'm going to start releasing more stuff. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, everyone. talk. Early yeah. in the year. Yes. Definitely keep an eye out for all that. Follow Scream at the Sky on all social media. And uh, is, wait, wait, where, where – do you guys have T-shirts or something? Dude, yeah, we have hella merch, dude. We have all kinds of designs. Where, where can we get that at? I can send you anything. Let's say you, got, you guys got a care package coming your way. But oh. definitely we, – we, uh, we, uh, we definitely sell plenty of T-shirts. We print all our own merchandise. So um, we have four or five different designs, hats, koozies, you name it, hard copies of the album, bags, hoodies. We, we, we print it all. We, we have a wide variety. We even have panties. We have all kinds of stuff, man. Is that uh, – and where where we find that at? Um, Just personally message us, man. We're, oh, okay. We're right currently live shows It's the okay. best way. Like I said, um, we're just a complete do-it-yourself band, man. We just do uh, – Personally, we, we personally mail everything to people, man. All right. All right. So everybody just message them on social media and uh, you can get some fucking badass merch. Uh, One of the social medias, man. You hit me up. I, I, I'm like a, bam, I'm like a six gun. I'll shoot a message right back. No automated shit. I terribly hate when I message somebody and then I get one of them. We'll get back to you later. I'm like, ah! Yeah, <laughs> yeah I do too. Yeah. It's annoying. Definitely. Um, but hell yeah, man. That's and that's the fucking way to do it. We definitely appreciate that. Um, and again, thank you so much for being on. We can never thank you enough for this. Uh, this was outstanding, outstanding. Um, guys, rock and roll. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So everybody, please fucking follow all things Scream at the Sky. Um, and uh. If you want some merch, hit them up. It's fucking almost Christmas. You got to get some people some badass metal shit, right? And this is a way to do it right here. So, um, yeah, we'll be back again very soon. Thank you so much, Brian. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Check out the Scream of the Sky. Good night. Oh, fucking A. There we go, everyone. There we go. Uh Brian from Scream at the Sky, holy shit. You know, seriously, say I, I wasn't lying. Save yourself is the mad notes. The like, mad notes. It's the maddest of notes. Hard as shit, dude. I love that song so much. I've been listening to that EP a lot actually lately. Six yeah. tracks of destruction. Um
just about ever since we started talking to him, I was, it's kind of been our rotate, repeat. Yeah. Repeat. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And we, and that was, I, that was seriously like, honestly, the most fun I've had in like two weeks. Like at least, at least was talking to him. Like he, he was so, he was a great guy. And, uh, so many we, stories. So many stories. So many stories. And I feel like he has so many more. So <laughs> we cannot wait to have him back on. Uh, Brian from Scream at the Sky is fucking outstanding. Um, thank you so much for being on, man. And thank you all. If you're still watching, um, you are a real motherfucker. Yeah, Aaron's going to show us. Yeah, this is their band camp. That's their art, uh, artwork. That's the self-titled EP. You can get it on Bandcamp. On I, I got it on iTunes personally. I'm sure you can get it on Spotify and other places. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I'll show it. Yeah. February 29, 2020, right there. Yeah, Scream of the Sky, self-titled EP. Everybody check that out. There is a, an acoustic version video of Failures. The second track on that EP on YouTube, um, it's phenomenal, uh, and and I I highly recommend everybody checking all that out. So uh, thank you so much to Brian. We can never fucking thank you enough, man. Please, uh, you you are welcome back on the show uh, anytime you want, uh, and we can't wait to do a fucking part two. Uh, it's going to be a fucking blast. Like, so we, we went, yeah, it was so what, fun. what was it like a, like an hour and a half or something mm -hmm. more around there? Yeah, it felt like it just went by like that. Oh dude. Yeah. I yeah. I don't know how long we were going, but you're like, Oh, it's been like an hour and a half close to two. I was like, and I like, and honestly, there. like that's something I like with, okay. Cause I've noticed that like episodes where they're an hour to an hour and a half typically get more views. So, you know, and I want, I want to get, like, if we have a guest on, you know, if it's just you and me, fuck it. Let's go for four hours. But <laughs> if, if we have a guest on, I like to try to keep it to that. So that way there will maybe be more eyes on them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that, yeah. that's what I'm going for is more eyes on them. Uh, so that, that's what I typically try to like to keep it to. But yeah, dude. The time with him melted. It was just so much fun talking to him. Uh, and and uh, I feel like it really came through on the episode. So, uh, yeah, man. We hope you all enjoyed that fucking episode as much as we did. Thank you. We can never fucking thank Brian enough for being on the show. You got lifelong fans right here, man. Uh, and uh, everybody check out Scream at the Sky. But also check out Dead Horse Trauma. That's the other band he's in. Um, be sure to check that out. And um, we can't wait to have him back on the show, man. He was, he, he was fucking awesome. So, yeah. I guess we'll wrap this one up. If you're still watching this, you're a real motherfucker. You're in the real motherfucking Crip Crew. We can never thank you enough. Um, this was so much fun. And we hope you all enjoyed the episode as much as we did. So, until next time, we got a lot more coming. But until then, fucking raise your fucking horns and bang your heads. We love you all to death. Good night. <laughs>